Hey YouTube, this is the Art of Prepping. We're going to wrap up the, uh, the series on food uh, storage options uh, for new preppers. And this is going to be part four. We're going to finish these uh, questions um, that we may have on how much food you should store and, um, and various other types of topics such as meal planners. So how much food should you store? Well, um, it depends on obviously how much uh, time do you want to have in reserve to survive through. Um, it may be just uh, something <clears throat> that uh, you're okay with, um, you know, two weeks supply or a month supply. Just if there's a local occurrence that you want to overcome, maybe it's a, a really bad snowstorm one year and you get snowed in. And uh, it's not unheard of in different parts of the United States to be stuck somewhere for, uh, you know, five to ten days, maybe more. Sometimes there's uh, really bad uh, ice storms, you know, that bring down the, the electrical poles. And um, what you have is maybe a week or two, you know, two weeks is not completely unheard of. So what we have here is it's what your comfort level is and what your goals are. Um, this is just a general outline here. Um, this is not uh, pointing fingers and uh, trying to put people in categories per se. It's just uh, in order just to kind of have a general, you know, idea of where people are in general. This is where I've come up with. Um, a three-day to one-month supply is, is typically a novice level. Um, like I said, more for immediate emergencies. And it could easily be all made up of all short-term supplies, uh, short-term food stuffs. And <clears throat> obviously you could go and, and buy the premium uh, freeze-dried kits and, and have you know that in for your 30-day supply and just not worry about it for 25, 35 years. That's, that's the way to go. You could do that too. But for the average person, it doesn't make sense to do that. You can just simply put uh, in a rotation uh, things that you already eat. It's a lot more simple that way and go with that uh, Someone that's more advanced would be a, a one to six month uh, you know uh, Individual or prepper that would have that in reserve and um, That would be obviously a mixture of the short and midterm foods So one to six months. <clears throat> I mean, that's that's pretty good I mean I, that would be more than the average person for sure, you know in the United States and um, I think that a professional or a pro level uh, prepper would have six plus months of supplies. Um, much more going toward the one year supply. If you can have one year or more, that is doing exceedingly well. And you should pretty much be able to survive, to my knowledge, most, uh, over 90% of anything that could be thrown at you. Um, in fact, it might be even closer to 95% or more. Uh, it's just, there's some of these things like massive grid down collapse that we wouldn't be able to get maybe some of the very larger transformers. And it, would, could, it could take upwards to the one to two year mark to get those um, all from overseas because we don't produce those here anymore in the United States. Those are the real scary ones. So EMP attacks or solar wind attacks. Um, those those are the ones that can keep you up at night just because it takes so long to recover from them so but they're very unlikely on some level but they can happen so that's just my thoughts on that um, obviously um, there's there's different ways to also look at what percent should you have in each type of food storage so on the short-term food storage because it's much more likely to happen and because you can put it on rotation and it can be a lot more affordable in that manner and you can have a lot more um, control over the diversity and types of food and not be at the mercy of kits and, and, and you know all these pre-made stuff from these uh, survival so-called companies. Uh, I'd say 50 to 60 percent of your food should be type, uh, like a short-term type of food. Now, once again, if you're not into like doing the rotation and if you're not into um, having, you know, the desire to deal with uh, a pantry that you rotate out, um, even though, you know, you may only have to fully rotate it out every like 
six months to a year you just do a full rotation you just start eating on it that's that's then that's something that i can understand that you may want to go to just especially if you have the money just go ahead and get yourself some you know more expensive uh, dehydrated and freeze-dried foods that you can just put in the closet and just literally forget about them and then 30 years later eat it and, and buy another kit so that's that's a way but for everybody else 50 to 60 percent in short term 20 to 30 percent in midterm food supplies and uh, 10 to 20 percent for your long term because statistically speaking you're not going to probably be using that um or you know that to be to use that is going to be a very low occurrence but you so definitely want that but by, by the time you would have the the need to use your long term though you would have all your other elements we've talked about like your hopefully you would have some type of orchard or you would have some type of of garden or you would have some type of um livestock you know or chickens or something you know so you would have all these other aspects so it's not like we always rely on just on food supply to get us by it's starting to get a little windy out here okay so the next thing is to have the largest variety possible and uh, as we mentioned briefly before in the early days the early pioneer days the early days of the settlers of the colony of the colonies in the united states what we had here was people that were brought in there was a lot of dried food a lot of peas and, and and lentils and what we saw was that sometimes they didn't have ways to spice it up or they ran out of spices or it was a very uh, expensive and rare thing to have flavor and what happened was palate fatigue palate fatigue set in some people and even though some of them had food still um, what happened was is they literally starved to death because they refused to continue to eat because they couldn't handle not having that flavor or they, it was just bland and after so many months if not possibly years of eating bland food they literally just refused to eat and, and it doesn't sound like it would be logical but it did happen um, now talking about meal planners you know we're going to break it down simply as you got to figure out first how many calories per person you're going to need okay now if you're just doing not very much obviously you can get away with pretty low numbers um so we're talking about you know in emergency situations that you're going to need calories to do stuff to increase your survivability teenagers of course, this is a very, very broad number. You know, you may be a lot higher than these, but these are these are minimum numbers. I would I would think would be uh, somewhat decent. Teenagers, uh, two thousand to twenty five hundred calories. Women, two thousand to twenty five hundred calories. And men, three thousand to four thousand calorie range. Probably closer to four thousand if you're going to be more active. And and then and up from there. So you know, if you're really like cutting wood all day, chopping wood. If you're um, doing some type of very, uh, you know, strenuous work, you may need 6,000 calories. I, you know, soldiers out in the battlefield, man, they, they burn up some food. That's why a lot of their MREs are so packed with calories. You know, I mean, we're talking like 1,500 to 2,000 calories per meal on a lot of these. Uh, so a lot of the civilian MREs, though, are really only going about 800 to 1,500 range. But uh, a lot of the official military ones uh, have a little extra boost to them. So, uh, with that being said, um, <clears throat> diversify your food storage locations. And this is going to be in, in case of a fire, looting, infestation, and other issues. And uh, better, it's better to build your food supply over time um, and be organized as possible. Uh, so you can get time to build up your shelving, find temperature control uh, areas, and and just have a, a place that you'd want it to be, instead of it being like right in your living room floor or something that you know is going to be a real kind of hassle, you know, and you have to look at it every day. So put it somewhere that you know you're not going to be regretting it. Um, and, and lastly, here we got food management skills uh, should be taught to everyone. Uh, everybody in the family from the teenager on up about how do you figure out 
you know, how to put a meal together, what is nutritious, how many calories you need, uh, especially if you're preparing, and then you multiply those calorie needs into meals and you figure out what foods that are gonna work in your meal plan. And then you multiply, like for example, if you need 4,000 calories a day and you're planning a one week supply, so you got 4,000 uh, times seven days and you know, you look at that and go, okay, so I need 28,000 calories. What are the foods that can make up that? So you, you know you need at least that. And so it's going to be good to have diversified meals once again. You don't want to eat the same foods pretty much every day. And uh, so with that, just remember to rotate all your foods, especially if they're canned goods and short and midterm foods. If you have any other uh, thoughts or comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching The Art of Prepping.